this is a tricky piece to camera because I'm not planning this out. I'm planning to do some cooking. I haven't planned anything other than what I want to cook. So in order to do the cooking today, I'm going to have to start by taking care of everything in the background there, which is a little bit of dirty dishes. Once I got the dirty dishes done, then I can start cooking. Yeah, someone got to do it. Next piece to camera. I'm just starting into um, preparing the different parts of what goes into boiled brews. So I might as well start showing what those things got to be. Or what the regular ingredients that I was taught were. So, yeah, and when I say taught, I learned it much later in life. It wasn't like I learned this from being a child. First thing, you're going to need hard bread. This is not added into much, much later, and you got to prepare this before you can use it. Normally, you would boil it, uh, put it in hot water or something first to cause the bread to swell up with the water. So it half cooks, and then you cook it again. But in this case, I'm going to be using this as... Um, if you can imagine a soup that's a lot like a chowder but doesn't have any milk or fat or cream in it, this is what goes in to take the place of milk fat, essentially. Not that it is, obviously it's not fat, but it is carbs. Now, uh, here on the countertop, I'm preparing... Ooh, I'm going to turn this this way. I'm preparing some salt beef which I got at the store. It's just a single hunk of salt beef and I'm cutting it up into little small chunks burned about this size. And I'm going to cut it even smaller than that. And this is where the fat and meat will come from for most of this base, the stock. So once I've got that all cut up, I'll put that onto one uh, plate or whatever. This will be cooked first in order to get the salt out of the meat. I'll use a little bit of water and stuff. And then uh, I'll be starting off another round with this, which is salt pork scrunchions. It's got these from Sobeys. You can see it's chocker salt pork scrunchions. They're in a little backpack bag. So I don't have to actually fool around a whole lot with the pork scrunchions by cutting them off. This is exceptionally fat and exceptionally salty. I won't be cooking the salt out of this. I'll be using just the salt, which is in this. No added salt at all. Uh, what else goes in? We got carrots. I got an onion. Uh, I've got turnip there. Turnip is actually a little better in pea soup normally than it is in boiled brews, but I'll probably use a bit of that tonight. Uh, potatoes, which I haven't bothered to take out yet. They'll be cooked toward the end. And I find that it's actually really good to use different kinds of vegetables in boiled brews. Um, what have I used in the past that's been good? I've used mushrooms to good effect, and I've got a bit of broccoli there tonight, which I might try. And I have used cauliflower in the past too, and nobody noticed. So, this is a good, a good thing. You can put pretty much anything into it that you want. Uh, the main thing is, is that ingredients are put in into the order of time that they'll require to cook. So the things which are easiest to cook go in last. That's the trick. Oh, and you need lots and lots of hot water. And this is the size of the bowl I'll be using. Or the size of the pot. It's not a very big one. It doesn't need to be. This is a beauty. So I'm going to finish prepping the meat here. When I got that done, I'll show what it looks like. And then I'll start prepping the rest of the vegetables. And we'll go from there. So I just started into doing some of the... Uh, uh, what do you call it? Fat pork. Like fat back pork. It was turns into scrunchions. So this comes out of the pre-done bag, sometimes in chunks and sometimes not in chunks. Like this is not in chunks. So I want to cut it up into the small pieces which make scrunchions. Like that. <coughs> These are the big pieces obviously and I'll be cutting them down to pieces about that small. And then the minute those are done, they go immediately into the pot. We'll start it off from there.
at about the uh, quarter of the way there at the beginning. So, and I've got all my scrunchions cocked up. What's happening is they're rendering the beginning of the first fry process. I'm just getting the oil and stuff out of there and starting to like crisp them up. Once that's done, we'll uh, start adding in various other ingredients like the salt meat. So, I've got to start doing up a quick salt meat run. I'm going to use this pot with the salt meat, which I've got all chunked up here. I'm going to put all of that into this and boil it out for a little while with a bit of hot water. And I'll strain it to get rid of so much of the salt which is in the meat. And of course, like I said, I'm only going to end up replacing it at the end with what's in that other pot. Because that's salt pork. So it's, it's quite salt. Hey, I've swapped the uh, camera around here so I can see better what I'm doing. So, what to talk about is here. Some of these pieces of meat are cut up really, really big compared to other ones, but that's because they've got bones in them. Whereas the smaller pieces, that's nothing but fat and meat. And that's the difference between the so I think the chunks are actually kind of visible here, but anything that's big like that's got a bone in it. And that's the reason why they're big like that. Everything else is fairly small. So, to transfer that over to the uh, mm -hmm. hot water here. Not quite boiling hot water yet. And in the background there you can hear the fat rendering. Actually, at a pretty much at a halfway point, or a quarter, as, the, as I was saying a minute ago. We do have to wait a little while for some of this stuff to start cooking up. Here's the only other thing. Uh, I'm going to want to use something like a wooden spoon here, rather than plastic, because this is really like a pretty damn hot, and I don't want it to burn. That includes I don't want to burn the fat in the pot here, so I want to keep it moving around and not the heat not on too high. So the heat is actually on like two or three right now, really low. Just to let that start to render out and I'll worry about frying it a little more in the next while. So I'm going to pot that, pretty much walk away from a minute or two. Next step, I just finished the... Um, so you can see this pot over here. That's what the salt meat was in. So the salt meat has now been added to the fried up scrunchions and also with a measure of boiled water. So I started the kettle boiling because I'm going to need the kettle boiling for the next, probably the next hour. As long as I'm adding stuff to the pot, I need hot water to do so. Every layer goes in with more hot water. That's the trick for boiled brews. That's the reason it's called boiled brews. That's the reason it works. So... Here's the hot fat, hot water, and salt meat cooking together. I got onion ready to go on the side. It'll go in next probably. Even though it doesn't take long to cook, it will cook throughout the, the flavor throughout. Those two next sets of vegetables to go in, and I have to prep the hard bread, which is probably going to be next. Um, got a container there to put prepped hard bread in because it's going to be quite a bit. And the size of the pot determines the amount of hard bread I need. For a pot that size, I figure probably four, maybe five loaves, uh, like little cakes of bread. You'll see them when I get ready to prep them. I'll show you what I'm doing. But yeah, now I've got that on low heat. It's just like on, well, it's probably on three there on the uh, electric. And you can see how it's just like kind of casually bubbling in the background. So I'll keep the top on there. Start smelling better the minute the salt beef goes in there. <laughs> I should probably get a, a tripod out so that I can be hands free while busting this up. There's a couple different ways of doing this. If I had a Brin bag, what's called a Brin bag, if like I had a 
a burlap sack, um, same as something that rice came in. You could probably use a plastic bag if you wanted to, but uh, hard bread is called hard bread for a reason. It's because it's hard. So if you try to break something inside of a plastic bag, which is hard like this, it'll start cutting the bag, the bag itself, which will end up with uh, crumbs and dust everywhere. Uh, I've known people to use a hammer to do this next piece, but I, I can you can actually do it with just a knife and a little bit of patience. The idea being that you look at the way that the bread is baked together and you find the places where it is already kind of weak and you just crack it to pieces on its own. Most loaves of hard bread will actually bust underneath just the pressure of your hand like that. If you put the pressure in the right place at the right time. And I can't do it holding the camera. Oh, uh, shit. Yeah, yes, I can. So, here's the hard bread. I got my headphones in so I can just barely hear myself. But uh, if I was to go like this, put it in my hand, you can start hearing a crack. There it goes. Once it cracks once, it'll split right pieces. And what I'm doing now is just literally taking little pieces off of it and putting them in here. I'll bust them up even smaller so that there's a certain amount of powder and a certain amount of larger chunks. The chunks become chewy on the teeth and very fun to eat, like very pleasant to eat, and the powder becomes stock. Here's the hard bread busted up. I haven't got it reduced to a lot of like powder in here, but some bigger chunks, some smaller chunks. It's about five loaves. All fits into a bit there. There's my onion. So I think this is what's going in next. I've got this uh, turned off for a little while, so it's like it's a little cooler than I would have it. I gotta start boiling this again. Important that this is boiling. This and this needs to boil together. Again, boiled brews. So I just put the kettle on again to get a little more uh, hot water to go in here to make sure there's enough to soak up all of the, all the hard bread. And once that's in and starting to stew, then I can look at putting in the rest of the vegetables and I still have to prepare, uh, I still have to prepare to be, uh, potato to go in there. I find potato goes in well toward the end. I've also taken out the uh, fish because of course this is fish and brews. So a piece of fish which I've had uh, holding on for purpose for a while. I'm using it from frozen. I'll cut it up while it's still frozen into bigger chunks and I'll just drop those in on top of the pot when the time comes. So the, uh, the meat and the taste of the fish will go throughout the hole and be cooked into it. Um, it's difficult though to uh, keep the fish together. It can be difficult to keep the fish together into like a large pieces of chunk that you, when you're eating it. Uh, that would be easier with fresh fish, I think, than with frozen, based on past experience. And it uh, definitely would be easier with salt fish as opposed to frozen or fresh, like uh, salt dried cod. I should also mention how long this is going to take to cook. Uh, about 4.30 there when I was last showing some of these things. I've been busy away at doing this for the last couple of minutes. I could have done that ahead of time and been ready to throw that in when the pot was hot the first time. Uh, but it'll be about an hour from the time that that goes into the time that it's finished or first ready to eat and as time goes on it will only get better Kettle is just boiled so Let's do this right in front here now. So this all oh, literally just goes straight in There's no ends ifs or buts. There's no tricks to it all that is to do is to, like I said earlier, add a certain amount of starch slash carbohydrates to this mix. Needs no extra salt. Does need quite a bit of hot water. So yeah, I'm filling that all the way up so it can all boil together and start to render out. Or start to like mix together from the various constituents that are already in there, which is mostly fat and meat at the moment and of course carbohydrates. Adding in the uh, various other things, various points. I, I also didn't put in the onion earlier, so I'm going to do that now. And I'm using a full big onion. I really wish I had some mushrooms to put in here. I love mushrooms in this stuff. 
fresh mushrooms, I mean. I suppose you could use a can if you had to. This would also probably be quite good with corn. And I do have some corn in here, so maybe I'll put corn in it tonight. There's the boiled brews ready to go or ready to start cooking. I'm going to turn the heat up to like five there. Keep the pot on so it doesn't boil over. And I got about an hour before the last of the stuff goes in and is cooked. The time has come. This will be turnip. Reason being, I know it's going to take the turnip a while to cook. So I'm going to put it in now. And I'm going to need a bigger pot. Here we go. Boil, bruise, step three. I just finished cutting up my potatoes here too, but that's going to be a little while before they're ready to go in. Oh, I uh, shouldn't forget this. I always adding in water as things go on because the starch which is in there from the hard bread continually sucks it up and makes it into broth. It's the trick. Always add hot water. The kettle is almost boiled again and just as it gets close on to boil here, this is starting to smell perfect. So it's time for the carrot to go in. Carrot doesn't take near as long as potato, at least in my experience. So in goes the carrot. And I'm trying very carefully to keep everything stirred up and with lots of water so it doesn't burn on or anything like that. You see some of the larger chunks of, uh, of hard bread are going out. They're going still in there, but the, the rest of it is starting to come into like a creamy broth. It looks like cream, but it isn't cream, because it's to do with the, as I've mentioned so many times before, the hard bread. A little bit of hot water just to make sure that that's still going to be good. I only just added in a little splash that time. The heat's still good and low, though. It doesn't need to be very hot once it's at boiling. I don't want the pot to boil over either, so. Okay, next main thing. Here's the piece of fish I've got. It's frozen, solid, nice big chunk of fish. So what I'm going to do is cut it in length strips or width strips like this. And then I'll cut it chunk ways this way. So it'll be large chunks which I put into the pot. And it'll go right up on top. And I'm going to leave it up on top so that it steams from what's coming up underneath it and then begins to break down into the pot underneath it. So anything that's in the fish goes into the pot. If this was fresh fish, uh, I don't know what else I'd throw in there, but i try to throw in everything I possibly could, including the sound bones and anything at all that's got pieces of meat on it could cook off into the pot. That's part of the reason why it's done. If I was using salt fish, I'd probably soak the salt fish first to get some of the salt out of it. Otherwise, this would all be too salty together. And when I'm eating this, probably the only spice I'll, I'll feel the need to add to it that I wouldn't add while I was cooking it is pepper. So I was just doing a stir here to see how things are coming along, and it's quite obvious to me that the, uh, the bruise is getting close to done. I haven't actually taken it out to test it with my teeth or anything yet, but it looks good to me. So here goes the potato. That's one of my tricks. I, I don't bother to peel the potato. I like potato peels. <laughs> so I leave them on. That goes right into the pot here. I'll just stir that up again in a little while. And the fish is going in next, and I don't know if I have enough room actually to put much more water in here, but it looks like it's probably got enough. Although I've been preaching the absolute necessity of adding water at every stage of the game, I'd have to have a bigger pot at this moment in time. Now, I've got a bigger pot here, so maybe I'll transfer yet, I don't know. But if I do, 
I got another one to wash. Hmm. Oh well. And uh, I've just transferred to the larger pot because I needed it. And I just put in some more hot water because I could I could again, and I'm glad I did because it needed it. It'll make sure that all of the constituents here are nice and consistent. Oh, it's looking nice and colorful too. Watching from the color of the vegetables I've already put in to tell whether or not stuff is cooked or not. So now whenever I see evidence that either the potato is overcooked or the bruise is well and truly done, then uh, then the fish will go in. And it's a bit a little out. It's long. It's coming up on an hour here now. The fish won't be very long once it goes in. Fish cooks away to absolutely nothing. Unless you had salt fish, I imagine you wouldn't get chunks of it. This is what she should say. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm talking aloud here. Uh, okay, uh, live the camera. I'm doing this piece of camera. So, yeah, I should probably not touch the screen. So here we are getting ready for the last step. And it is coming up on an hour since I've been puttering away here. I have made this faster in the past. And I'm going to just start adding the fish right up on top here. The reason I know that it's time is the uh, vegetables. Or the reason I'm guessing that now is the time, I should say. But I got these nice big chunks of fish going in up on top. You could use tofu if you wanted to. Fish flavored tofu, I don't know. Protein's protein, right? Level on three so it doesn't burn. Uh, I got the kettle boiling in the background there. I uh, don't need to do anything else with that tonight other than make a cup of tea, which is good. And now it's all over but the crying. This is the saddest part. I just turned on the. I, I'm going to do this again and include this in this video. I'm supposedly making food in this video, but. Look at the difference in the light if I turn on this, this piece of crap friggin' fluorescent above. So the kettle is almost boiled, but I'm, I'm not actually going to be putting brews or water in, into the pot at the moment because it's, it's pretty much done. And I'm going to pop the pot open for a second here just to show how it almost looks a bit like a pea soup. It doesn't have any pea in it. It could be a pea soup if it had peas in it, except of peas, it has fish and brews. Think of it that way. It's like a pea soup with fish and brews instead of peas. And you can put anything else. I, I was thinking about adding corn in there. I might still do that because it wouldn't need to be cooked. Where all I have is canned corn. But you can also see how it's starting to thicken up from the hard bread being in it. There's nothing else added there to thicken that up. There's no starch, no cornstarch, no nothing, no flour other than what's in the hard bread. So the more you bust up the hard bread, the better that will tend to start thickening. So it doesn't need any more hot water. And the one thing I can't do, <laughs> one thing we were limited from doing here is smell a vision because it's so easy to tell when that's cooked. You can smell it. It immediately begins to smell awesome. And, uh, I'm going to be eating before long. So, uh, time 6.30. It's been cooking for a bit. Oh my goodness. Yeah, this is done, Charlie. Oh, starting to get like, uh, how to describe it. All of the brews are starting to boil out now. The potato is still there cooking. Still see pieces of fish in among it. But you can see how the potato hasn't broken apart yet. What I'll do now is probably uh, serve up a tiny little bowl for myself to see how salt it is because I haven't even tested this yet. Mmm. Oh, good. Mmm. Not that salty. Ooh, but salty in the right way. Good gosh. I'm going to dry a few dishes so I can eat proper and then uh, I'm going to sit down and eat. So, 
Let's see what we got here. A little bit of pepper. Uh, I got bread and stuff in the oven or uh, in the fridge there. I don't know if I want any right now. As soon as I know it's within that pot. Oh man, I'm gonna stop at three spoonfuls. <laughs> I'm gonna stop at three ladlefuls just till I get this determined uh, what kind of a, a job have I got done. Oh. Take my headphones off. So, uh,. I haven't even tested, well, I, I have tested the, the broth. Let's test it again. Mmm. Okay, that's a bit of potato. Salt meat, of course, is cooked. Because it's cooked first. Turnips cooked. Carrot cook. Do a larger chunk of potato. Test that. Mmm. Perfect. So now the last item other than fish, which, like I say, is pretty much mixed through it, is throughout it now, right? That would be, this is hard bread. No crunch. Put through. He's doughy like a dough boy though. If I had busted it up smaller, it wouldn't be like that. The smallest pieces are like, kind of like al dente um, pasta. I mean, the texture and the consistency is what you feel in your teeth. Mm. Oh God, this is good. Mm. This is what would be served on a fishing boat. Apparently, if the men are doing the cooking. Apparently. That's what I've heard, although I've seen it cooked by both men and women. Of course, the women who, are, who I watched cook it, they used to say that the men made it better. I don't know if that's true or not. I've never... Well, I, I have compared pots from one source or another, and... Didn't much find much. I didn't actually find a difference between the two of them. One might have been a little more salty, and that would reflect the realities of the dietary requirements of the people in question. I think, but but yeah, this is more than edible. Mmm. I'm, I'm gonna think about too whether or not I'm gonna do like another couple of text cards or something up here on this video, whether or not I'll like explain the whether or not I'll explain the uh, recipe out entirely or just leave it hanging there so to speak you can figure out from what you saw, right? Mm. Ball two